The Plattsville and District Heritage Society is pleased to take part in the second annual Oxford Local History Day. In 1996, a small group met to plan celebrations to commemorate the 200th anniversary of early settlement of the Plattsville area. In 2000, representatives from organizations in the area met to to celebrate Plattsville's 150th anniversary. A committee was formed and named Plattsville District Heritage Committee. Later that year, the Plattsville District Heritage Society was incorporated under the Ontario Heritage Society. The Society has published two books thanks to Trillium Grants, The Book of Remembrance by Gao Harvey and Once Upon a Time in Washington by Jennifer Harvey. In 2012, the Chesterfield Cemetery Board invited the Plattsville and District Heritage Society the use of the Chesterfield Church Building, and so began exciting times. Volunteers were busy painting, sanding floors, and preparing the areas for displays. This year, we celebrate 10 years at Chesterfield, and it feels like home. We have an active archives committee who are busy preserving the history of the area. In 2015, we held two major exhibits, a gathering of quilts and an interactive toy and game display. In 2016, we celebrated Weddings Through the Ages. 2017, Windows to the Past in celebration of Canada's 150th birthday. 2018, we opened the doors to Christmas. In 2019, we remembered the 50s and 60s. In 2021, we were back with hobbies, crafts, and collections. We have completed our signage project and we'll now take you on a road trip through our historic communities. A look back at small towns that used to be within the bounds of the Plattsville and District Heritage Society. Enjoy the journey. The area which we know as Chesterfield, Ontario was settled largely by Scottish immigrants. One of those settlers, George Baird, an admirer of George, Lord Chesterfield suggested the name Chesterfield for the tiny hamlet. Mr. Baird was a merchant and built his store which contained the local post office on the southeast corner of Squire Brown's farm. As a special service to the farming community, he left the post office open on the Sabbath so they could get their mail. In the County of Oxford Gazetteer for 1861, Chesterfield is described as a post village of the township of Blenheim with post office located on the 24th lot, 12th concession. It has a daily mail received at 10 a.m. from Hamburg to Plattsville. It contains one church, namely Canada Presbyterian. Sadly, George Baird's store burned to the ground in July of 1913. It was never rebuilt and the land is now part of the brown farm and crops are growing every year where the store once stood. A Presbyterian congregation was formed on February the 10th, 1846. A log church was built close to the site of the present building and was in use until 1855. Surnames of the first members included Baird, Brown, Cowan, Fairburn, Mackenzie, Murray, Scott, Swan, Taylor, Thompson, Dalglish, Jarden, and Miller. It is noted that Mrs. Charles Dalglish, Mrs. Andrew Bell, and Mrs. John Murray were sisters from the Little family and related to the Scott family. They came from the Scottish borders. In 1854, a new church was needed and a quarter acre of land was donated by Aaron Clements. Stone for the foundation was hauled by horse and ox teams. Clay for the bricks came from the Wolcott farm. The old log church was converted into a temporary stable for the horses. A manse was built in 1868. However, when no longer needed, it was dismantled and moved to a farm close by. In 1872, a strip of land, one fifth of an acre, was purchased from the Charles Dalglish to provide a long frame building containing 33 tie up stalls and some box stalls to tie horses that were unhitched. 
1936, a windstorm destroyed most of the remaining sheds. An octagon shed was erected from the salvaged materials of the former sheds and became a landmark in the community. This shed was used as storage for items from the church and cemetery. 12 years later in 1983, it was destroyed by a fire which was set by vandals on the night before Halloween. It was decide decided not to rebuild and for a donation to the church, the land reverted back to the present landowner. From time to time, the cemetery has been enlarged and improved, and it is in keeping with um, respect to those who labored and planned in bygone days. Charles Deglish was a caretaker in the late 1890s, and there have been many excellent caretakers over the years. The cemetery remains the property of the board, and with the closure of the church has become a community burial plot. It is widely known and visited by many who cherish fond memories of the past. On September the 20th, 1920, an imposing war memorial was erected upon which 21 names of those who paid the supreme sacrifice in World War I were inscribed. A further four names were inscribed after World War II, and more recently, the name of Tyler Todd, who fought in Afghanistan, has been added. In August 1952, a mausoleum was dedicated at Chesterfield so that graves would not have to be dug in the winter months. It was built on the foundation of the former manse. The Buchan, Murray, Hastings, Brown, Henderson, Bell, Wolcott families are all present in the area. As one walks around the Chesterfield Cemetery, the names all have a story to tell. Our signs now keep you from missing Chesterfield, Ontario. With its rom rather romantic Scottish connotation, beautiful view, it exactly described this hamlet one mile east of Chesterfield on the 13th line, now Regional Road 42. The area was settled in the late 30s and early 40s of the 19th century and was once a busy center. Along the main street, there were private homes with picket fences, a wagon and blacksmith shop combined, a drive shed store, shoemaker shop, two cooper shops and a post office. A pump at the side of the wagon shop provided clean water for residents and the truck was used to cool the metal rimmed wooden wheels. The school, which still exists today as a home, was built in 1854. It was painted white and had green shutters on its eight windows. The frame building was bricked over in 1878. With the coming of the railroad and the accompanying growth of Bright and Chesterfield, the business establishments of Blink Bonnie dwindled and passed away. There is one interesting story I'd like to share. A certain lady of the community was anxious that her good man, Joe, should accompany her to church. He excused himself on the grounds that he had no fit clothes to wear. That excuse, as the story goes, lasted him exactly one week. On the Monday of the next week, his wife had him shear sheep, and between Monday and Saturday night, she washed, carded, and spun the wool, wove the cloth, and made a suit. And the storyteller added, he was a big man. It seems to be a good story to recall when we think we are overworked. As an illustration of perseverance, industry, determination, and skill, it is hard to surpass it. Perry's Corners is located on County Road 8, seven and a half kilometers east of Plattsville at Road 8's intersection with Blenheim Road. George Perry was born and educated in England. In 1835, at age 16, he came to Canada and this area. After his marriage, he owned and farmed land northwest of the intersection. When land on the northeast corner was granted to the township for a common school, Perry was the driving force building and running this log school and was its first teacher. His school had the reputation of one of the best in the district. Later as needed, two larger schools were built. 
but on the west side of Blenheim Road. We know Perry taught in the second school as well. These two schools served the community until township roads were, uh, township schools were closed. Hence, the schools and the area is and was known as Perry's Corners. Perry farmed, taught school, and became involved with municipal politics as councillor, reeve, and eventually was elected twice to represent Oxford North in the Ontario legislature. After his appointment as sheriff of Oxford County, he moved to Woodstock, where he lived until his death at 72. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Perry's Corners had a blacksmith shop, a buggy shop, and later a poultry and egg enterprise. A community beef ring organized in 1907 served the community for 50 years, closing in 1957. Today, Paris Corners is home to several thriving local businesses. Welcome to the fourth community recognized by the Plattsland District Heritage Society at the Heritage Village. Lower Rapa was first established in 1849 on the southwest corner and named Rappaville in 1850. The only village totally developed within Blanford Township. With the coming of the railroad in 1857, Upper Rappa was established. Rafa developed from parcels of land purchased from four different corners of farm properties. And the first property was on the southwest corner in 1849, and in 1850, it was named Rafaville. Among the homes and businesses, which consist of six or seven homes, there was a church and a large shed for horse and buggies, two general stores, post office, which mail was delivered from Interkip by horseback on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. There was a carriage maker, furniture repair shop, chicken coop, which was later used as a home and later a dance hall, carpenter shop, tailor shop, shoe making shop, milk and a cheese factory, schools, blacksmith shop, and a temperance hall, which over the time had been used as a home store, school, worship place, dance hall, wedding receptions, card games, quilting bees, WMS meetings, polling station, workshop before burning in 1980. Rathal Presbyterian Church was built in 1852 at a cost of $800. During 1952, a basement was installed under the church by Harold Harris of Winterkip. Many functions were then held in the basement, one of which was our annual turkey supper on Tuesday night following the anniversary in September. At times, we would have nearly 400 people coming for our supper. Early settlers' names consisted of Arnott, Brash, Caping, Crawford, Elliott, Ferguson, Foster, Gow, Hewitt, Pete, Sillers, Vance. Take a walk through the cemetery and you will find among the gravestones many of these names. Today, we have six resident homes and the church on the corner, which we call Lower Rathal. Upper Rathal, which is about a half a mile north, was established in 1857 when the Buffalo Lake Huron Railroad was built. Lots were surveyed and marked out, hoping that a community would develop. An auction sale was set for May 26, 1857, and that sale was unsuccessful and no lots were sold. However, there was a large general store built by Mr. Morrow in 1857. The post office was then moved from Lower Rapa to Mr. Morrow's store as the mail started coming by train to the community. And this continued until 1913 when the rural mail was started. Gas pumps were later installed in the front of the store. The Blue Dog Hotel was built across from the store in 1878 and contained a large room and a dance hall and stables for horses. This was well patronized and was eventually torn down during World War I. 
A railway station and home was built for the station master. And from there, the businesses and community used the train station and railroad for bringing goods to the community. Both the CNR and the CPR used this railway line. Around 1916, way scales were built, livestock yards built, spur line added, freight sheds installed for shipping and receiving. Hicks and Powdered Milk Company used this from 1914 to 1918. Fertilizer ingredients were shipped in and mixed and sold to farmers. During the 1920s, a group of Ratha farmers would get together quarterly and discuss the needs for the farmers' grain seeds and have them shipped in by train and then bagged and sold to farmers. It was cheaper. The station master's house became the first waxing plant and Roy and Lorraine, Lloyd Facey bought the waxing plant around 1942. During 1951, 150 carloads of turnips were shipped this building was destroyed by fire in 1962. 1948, coal was brought in by train from Alberta and sold for winter heat. The trains continued until around the late 1960-1970 and the tracks removed in 1980s. Eleven homes now call these two hamlets of Lower and Upper Rathal on the 12th concession of Blanford Township. Out in the country, but close enough to reach any major city within 30 to 45 minutes. Thank you for coming along on this journey to visit the historic communities in Oxford County within the boundaries of the Plattsville and District Heritage Society. The District Heritage Society would like to welcome you to our exhibit this summer featuring the Roaring Twenties, the Dirty Thirties, the war years to the baby boom. We will take a look back at the historical events that shaped the decades from the 1920s through the 1940s. You will see the influence that the temperance societies and prohibition, the Great Depression, World War II, and the baby boom had on society. The rights of women were evolving in important inventions such as insulin and the car assembly line were being made. You'll see fashions, including clothes and jewelry, bridal wear, Christmas trees and traditions, quilts, movies, toys and games, household items, as well as popular foods from that era. You will be able to sample some of the snacks that were available, all the while listening to popular music of the decades. We will be open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. starting June the 18th, or by appointment. Keep up to date for further details by following us on Facebook. We look forward to seeing you this summer with public health protocols in place for your comfort and safety. Thank you for taking this trip down memory lane with us. Special thanks to Carol, Judy, Donna, Mildred, Denise and Marg for taking part in this journey. On behalf of the Plattsville and District Heritage Society, we look forward to you visiting us at Chesterfield later this year.